To give you a bit of background about this project, we've been tasked to coordinate with a contractor the timeline for construction of the shown proposed roadway. We will export our design corridor to Corridor Solids and match a Gantt chart to the model inside of the timeliner in Autodesk Navisworks. So the design corridor is shown here in our Civil 3D model. We need to make sure that the corridor is broken down distance-wise the way that we want, meaning the contractor will not build the road all at one time. Today we will break it down into around 300 meter increments and once the, this has been reviewed we can export the corridor solids. So let's take a look at our corridor. I say that we're going to break this down into 300 meter increments. Whenever we extract our corridor solids we will set the regions that we want distance wise meaning we will, we will tell it that we want to go 300, 300 meter uh, increments. Our corridor itself doesn't have to be broken down that way. Now we all know that whenever you're generating a corridor, it's not ideal to try and match a specific schedule because we don't really know what that is in design when we're doing the design. So this thing could be broken up into a hundred different regions um, depending on how the design took place. So real quick I'm going to show you the corridor properties and show you that there's one region here today. Um, Again, this could have multiple regions, and, and I, I promise you it will whenever you're doing design. So just want to show you that it's, it is all one region. And the way we're going to break it down is we're going to select the corridor and then select Extract Corridor Solids. Now in the extra, uh, Corridor Solids from Corridor dialog box, it shows our initial baseline from our corridor. So I'm going to break this down by adding a region. So I'm going to start at zero and come down to station 300 and it will create a region for me. Notice that when it creates the region it also it, it shows us this, the, the actual region name zero to 300 and it gives us all of the shapes and shape codes from the assembly that was used inside the corridor. I'm going to go ahead and and break this up into the other regions. So I will select 300 and go to 600 and it will create another region for me. I'll go from 600 to 900 because again we're going in 300 meter increments. And I'll add the last region. We'll go from 900 to the end of the corridor for today. Once our regions are set, then the next thing we want to do is we want to look at our layer name template. Okay, so whenever it dumps out the corridor solids, I want to be able to match these items up to my Gantt chart inside of the timeliner in Autodesk Navisworks Manage. So I want to I want to use specific a specific naming convention on those layers. So I'm going to change it for the baseline, and it will automatically populate all of my regions that I just created. So I'm going to select inside that that uh, box, and I want to show my construction region name, and then I'm going to break it down by shape code. I select OK and it automatically updates all of my, my layering name convention. And notice what it's going to do. It's going to put the construction region name, which would be 0 to 300 in this case, and then the shape code, which would be pave 1, pave 2, so on and so forth. So one last thing, I always like to collapse uh, my, my uh, tree here and then make sure that my regions all got populated the way that I want. Once that's uh, reviewed, I can hit next and then I'm going to select uh, my create object type. I'm going to go ahead and leave it AutoCAD 3D solids based on corridor sampling and I'm going to go ahead and select add a new drawing and select my drawing. And I will name it roadway corridor solids and I'll select create solids. Now once this is through generating we'll open up that drawing and I'll show you what the end result is from the export. 
So when we open up the, the roadway corridor solids file that we just exported out, you can see once I select that it's broken up into the regions that we created. Now it's not just the daylighting there that I've selected, it's every, every piece of the assembly is broken up. So I'm going to change this to realistic so we can look at it. And then I'll turn it up here on its side by using my view cube. We can zoom in and we can see that if I select my base or sub base, it is broken out onto either side of the center line and my pave one, pave two, and so on is all broken up into corridor into the 3D solids so that we can attach them to a, Ga a Gantt chart inside of Navisworks. So let's go ahead and open up Autodesk Navisworks Manage and put our timeline together. So now that we're here in Autodesk Navisworks Manage, we need to start off by appending the drawing that we just created out of Civil 3D when we exported our corridor solids. So let's go up and append our drawing. And we'll select that file that we just exported. We'll wait for that file to come in, and we'll zoom to it. So once the file is in the model, I'll zoom in here real quick and just select some things just so you can see that the corridor cellars are broken up just like we showed inside of Civil 3D. So now what we need to do is match this up with our Gantt chart. So first thing I want you to do is notice that the the navigation inside of Navisworks Manage is much the same as it is inside of AutoCAD Autodesk Civil 3D. So we're going to use our view cube to zoom around. And I'll zoom in again and just show you real quick that all of these solids are here just like we talked about earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my Timeliner. First things first, we're going to select the Task tab, and we can add tasks manually um, if, we, if we want to. We can hit Add a Task. We can give it a quick name, a planned start, a planned end, or an actual start, an actual end date if we have those. Um, but we just have to manually fill this information out. As you can see, it would take a little while to, to add those manually. It could be done, but it does take a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to actually attach a data source, which will be our Gantt chart. And we will match these corridor solid pieces that came in up to our Gantt chart so that we can show a simulation in the Timeliner. When I select Add, you can see that there's several different types of files that we can, we can add. So we've got CSV import. We can also bring in some Microsoft Project files or Primavera files. We're going to bring in the CSV. I'll select my timeline and I'll hit OK. Now, once the data source has been added, we just rebuild our task hierarchy. And we can see that our task tab is populated with all of our different regions that we had in the Civil 3D model. Once that's in, we can select auto attach using rules and make sure that the map the timeliner from column name to layers and name uh, with the same name matching the case we'll apply this rule and it will automatically attach all of our information in our Gantt chart or our task tab to our 3D solids. So let's jump to the simulate tab and let's select play and we can see that it starts to populate as we've got it set up in the task tab of the timeliner. Now I could pan and zoom while this is while this is working. So I can see that it builds my first 300 meters just like we told it to inside of civil, the Civil 3D model when we exported the 3D solids. Also take notice up here in the upper left hand corner it's going through the day and the time um, so we can monitor where we're at inside of the simulation. So now that it's done simulating, you can see that it shows the entire road and it's gone through the entire simulation. So as you can see, in 10 to 15 minutes, we're able to export our corridor and match it up to a Gantt chart in the timeliner inside of Autodesk Navisworks Manage, which allowed us to visually see the construction sequencing of our proposed roadway. I thank you for your time today and hope you enjoyed the presentation.